Hey guys, welcome back to Home Theater Guru. So today we've got another Q&A, and this one is from Juggernaut for Christ. Are the front wides just an extension for the LCR, and do you need to tow in your fronts if you're running wides, especially if you're running in-wall LCRs? Are you okay with not towing them in if you have front wides? So first, let's talk about why we need to tow in speakers, period. So let's take our mains. They have a dispersion just like any speaker does. In other words, they have on axis and off axis, okay? The off axis is the energy that's not, you know, on axis is directly pointed at us when we point the speaker at us, that's the on axis. As we move off axis, we're going to lose energy. And what I mean by that is if you play the pink noise in your receiver, that's the noise you hear when you're setting your levels. It's the sound, you know, it's kind of loud depending on how loud you got it cranked. That's your pink noise. If you play that and you stand directly in front of your speaker, you're gonna have a lot of high energy. That's what you want your pink noise to sound like. Now, if you move off axis of your speaker, let's say you sit at a seat next to you and then you sit to another seat, you know, even further away, as you move further away from on axis, you're gonna lose the upper energy. So it's, you're gonna lose the upper hiss of the pink noise. So it's gonna go from a to a You're gonna lose that the spatial cues that you need to really make that speaker sparkle. Now this can hurt Atmos a lot that we know with your placement of objects, you can completely lose them by sitting too far off axis of like your Atmos speakers. But with your mains, that dispersion is very, very important. We need to control it. We need to aim that dispersion because we have a certain amount of good sound where we can sit. So I'm sure we've all experimented with in-room speakers like towers and bookshelves. And you've noticed that when you're listening to two-channel music, when you aim them, the sound changes. The sound stage can open up, the sound stage can collapse. What you're doing is you're manipulating how much on-axis energy is at the seats and how much is hitting the sidewalls. And all of that is summing together to give you an experience at your listening position. Now with home theater, we've got multiple seats. So we don't want to just have great seat at, you know, or great sound at one spot. We need to have great sound at multiple spots. So if you had your mains aimed straight forward, let's say you got good sound in your primary listening position with your mains aimed straight forward. This happens very, very rarely. Aiming them almost always is gonna give you a better experience. Depends on the speaker's dispersion, how the sidewalls are treated, how close they are to the sidewalls. But let's say it sounds good right here. Speakers are, the mains are aimed straight. The guy over here is actually on axis with that left main right there. Okay, as soon as he starts moving this way, further away from it, he's gonna start hearing less of that high energy and it's not gonna sound so great. By the time he gets over there, he's, he has nothing but mids and lows, all the upper energy sparkle is gone. That's not good. But when he gets way over there, guess what? Now he's on axis of the speaker that's over here in front of him, the right. So it has the sparkle and this one has none. So his experience is pretty poor. This is what happens if you have end walls that are flat to the wall. Now, you have to remember a lot of times people will have end walls flanking a large projector screen. So they may be at 30 degrees, which 30 degrees off of zero, your center is at zero, gives you a nice wide sound stage. That's actually 30 degrees is kind of the default for most, you know, things like uh, THX and Dolby. They all recommend 30 degrees as their go-to. Now, that, there's some wiggle room there. There's some pros and cons to being directly at 30 but let's say you're at 30. That means the main listening position, that speaker is 30 degrees off axis, okay? So that means this seat is 30 degrees off axis. That's not good. That's pretty far off axis. Now, by the time you move over there, you may be 40, 50 degrees off axis by the time you get to your seat closest to the opposite sidewall from that speaker. If you've got a speaker with a waveguide, those waveguides, you know, it's a plastic guide that actually controls the dispersion. Past that guide, it's completely blocked. So if this is 30, the next seat over is approaching 40, is approaching the very edge of that waveguide. The next seat over from that is usually outside of the waveguide completely. So you can imagine that white noise seat to seat is gonna sound drastically different with the four seats over there just sounding really bad. If you've got some expensive end walls, that's just a really bad thing to do to just put them flat in the wall. You don't wanna do that. Just like with in-room, uh, you know, your towers and your bookshelves, we all know 
how much of a difference it can make with aiming. There's nothing special about an in-wall that makes that not the same. The rules are the same. Dispersion, speaker dispersion doesn't magically change just because it's in a wall. There are some benefits to a wall like the boundary effect, but we'll get into that in another episode. Now there are some speakers like the JBL SCL7 that has an angled baffle. Now it has a 15 degree angle baffle. That's not a lot, but that is enough to get the majority of the good sound across a pretty wide seating area. You know, for like a standard sofa, three or four seats of a home theater. You know, so you can get good sound with something like that and get good coverage. Uh, so there are speakers out there that cater to that and understand that that dispersion needs to be aimed when the speakers are installed flat. Now you can also do angled wall sections. There's, there's a bunch of tricks you can do, uh, hybrid baffle walls, things like that to be able to actually aim a speaker that's in wall and even maintain the boundary wall effect that you get from having an in wall in a wall because it doesn't allow any sound to wrap around it. It forces it all forward. So there's some benefits there. Some speakers are even made to be able to be placed in wall, on wall, in column, in a false wall. So, you know, there's adjustments you have to make whenever you go, whenever you set the room up in your EQ. But there are speaker manufacturers out there that realize you need some flexibility in how you can set up your room. So bottom line, we always have to tow them in. Now the second question was about wide. So of course, I think I answered that. You have to tow those speakers in no matter what. Those mains are responsible for your sound stage when music's playing in your, you know, your movie and whatever you're watching. They're extremely important. If you don't have those aimed, you're not gonna have a, nearly the experience you would if you had them aimed. Now, as far as the wides, they just transition from the main to the surround. We hear very well pretty much from our sides to everything in front of us. Behind us, we don't hear as well. Above us, we don't hear as well. And the reason is because we've got an ear on each side of our head. So we can use the information that our brain gets from one ear to the other and locate objects extremely accurately on the, on the horizontal plane. But vertically, not so well. That's why we need so much separation to hear really good at most. So the wide helps transition the main, or sounds panning from the main to the surround. It also helps with closer seats because if you're closer to a speaker, as objects pan, that closer speaker is going to, the object's gonna to snap to that speaker very quickly. The wide helps alleviate that, and also it does help expand the sound stage. Now, DSU could not always, which is the Dolby Surround Up Mixer, it couldn't always upmix old content like 5.1, 7.1 to use wides, didn't always do it. A couple years ago, it started getting implemented in an update and thankfully, and it is game changing, thankfully most manufacturers now allow it like Anthem. I've got an Anthem in here and I send uh, clips to my clients when they're like, you know, I heard wides aren't used and I was like, well watch this. So I've got these clips with the, the LCR, the surrounds and rears off and I've got just the tops on and the wides on, so that's the stuff that's being upmixed, and the phone's next to the wide, it's just something I shot with a phone, and it's going nuts. Even in a title menu, it's actually Iron Man, the, the menu, which just has music playing, it's going nuts. So they are extremely aggressive, they are awesome. With native Atmos, it's gonna be hit or miss, whether they're used or not, depends on the studio that mixed the Atmos. So, that's how wides kind of fall into line here. They're not going to make tow in not needed. It is absolutely needed. So tow your, tow your mains in if you want great sound, bottom line. If you can't tow them in, just understand it's a compromise. You know, try to get some really hard reflections on those sidewalls next to them, maximum uh, reflections. If you're using a combo panel, you want to really hit them hard with some reflected energy back just to try to overcome the lack of towing. You're not gonna be able to overcome it completely, but it will help. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this one. If you have any comments or questions, drop them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know the new videos come out, and I will see y'all next time.